Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Monday, August 22nd, 2016. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market fronts, over there in Asia, eh, Nikkei up a little bit, Shanghai down a little bit, Hang Seng up a little bit. Over there in Europe, everything down a little bit. Here in the States, mixed Dow down, NASDAQ up, but not a lot. But oil, boom, bam, zap, down over 3%. Hey, I thought everything was okay over there. Well, we'll see why. Oil went down after it went up eh, about 20% in August, since it's hit its low. And gold. Gold's down just a tiny bit. It's down around 337 Needs to break smartly over that 350, 370 mark to hit that 1400 barrier that's stopping it. And again, as I keep saying, once gold smartly breaks above 1400, off to 2000. Again, that's our trend forecast, not investment advice. So, why did oil prices go down? Well, China ramped up exports of refined products. Exports of diesel and gasoline soared 181.8 and 145.2% respectively. So, those oil rigs, remember when I told you that oil gets back up to around 50, more rigs coming out? Well, adding to the bearish sentiment, U.S. drillers added 10 rigs in the week of August 19th. 32 rigs have been added in August alone, and that's going to add some 200,000 barrels per day. On to some other news, things quieted down over there a bit in Nigeria, so they're pumping more oil, and they're talking about Iraq, and Iraq is going to be exporting another 150,000 barrels from Kirkuk crude from that area. And Iran now is only 200,000 barrels short of where it was before they put sanctions on them back in 2011, and they're going to surpass that. So remember what I've been saying all along. They're going to have a meeting over there in the middle of September in OPEC, and on the sidelines, they're going to cut a deal. They keep saying that it drove the price up smartly, and now you're seeing it go back down. The markets are rigged whether it's in commodities or in stocks. So let's grow up and understand this. You can see the way they're pushing it up and down. You don't have to be a trend forecaster. All you have to do is be a little bit awake. We've seen these things move like that, and the fundamentals of the economy are that the only way oil is going to go up is when demand goes up. End of story. And the market's being rigged. Well, we know that as a fact as well. It's called negative interest rate, zero interest rate policy, and quantitative easing. U.S. stocks close mostly lower as oil sheds 3%. Well, wait a minute. You guys from Wall Street keep saying the markets follow oil. So, hey, how come markets only went down a little bit and were mixed if oil went down so low? But anyway, we got to look at what's going on. We're in the last two weeks of August. Trading is very thin. It's going to remain very thin, but it also has a high probability or possibility, I should say, of market volatility. And now the words coming out from the Fed and Yellen's going to be screaming on Friday. Who knows about what? We know about what. Should be talking in fine terms of exact. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. She'll mumbo jumbo her way through and everybody will salute and say how, wow, what she said uh, doesn't make any sense, but she never does. So they're going to be talking on on, uh, Friday. And now the bet is that interest rates are going to go up in December, 50% according to the analysts out there. And I tend to agree with that if they do raise them. But again, anything could happen between now and then. And again, with the low interest rates, here's the story, and here's the story why they can't raise them. I've been talking about this. This is from the Financial Times. 
Emerging markets back in vogue as yield-hungry investors feel the squeeze. Money is being poured into emerging market at record pace as negative interest rates across the developed world lure investors toward riskier assets in what one trader has dubbed a buying craze. So now remember, at the start of the year, the emerging markets were in the toilet, but now they're booming up because people have nowhere to put their money. Goes back to the interest rate story. Once they raise interest rates, they go higher, the dollar gets stronger, these emerging markets go down. It's only gambling. Economists say unprecedented levels of central bank easing in the UK, Japan, and Europe are encouraging investors, gamblers, to ignore the risks of committing money to some of the world's least stable economies. And you notice they didn't mention the United States. We have near zero interest rate policy as well. They raised them a lousy 25 basis points the first time in over nine years back in December. So you can see where this is going. Because, as I said, the game is rigged. Don't believe me? Hey, Australian banks cited in rate fixing suit. Yeah, another suit of crap. A lawsuit filed in the U.S. accuses Australia's biggest banks and several international investment banks of fixing Australia's interest rate benchmark. You know what will happen? Nothing. Because here's the story in the weekend Financial Times that probably not many people were reading. And what does it say? Deutsche Bank whistleblower snubs $8.25 million SEC payout. A whistleblower who helped expose false accounting at Deutsche Bank turned down a multi-million dollar award from the Securities and Exchange Commission in protest against the agency's failure to punish executives at the bank. Well, there's a moral man for you. But they will never prosecute the top people because, as I keep saying, it's a neo-feudal society, different sets of rules, as proven with Hitlery getting off with the FBI. If any of you or I did that, boy, or we worked for the government and did what she did, boy, they'd have house locked up, man. And a different set of rules for the economic elite. The proof is here. And as we say the economic elite and the political nobility, let us not forget the wars, the murderous wars started by Obama, by Clinton, by the Bushes and the other criminals out there. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Clinton. Yeah, you remember the Libyan war. Hillary Clinton, Samantha Powers, and Susan Rice. That's right. So... Don't expect anything. No justice. J-U-S-T-U-S, -U just us. The neo-feudal society, they hit the little people hard and give the big criminals a free ride. Italian banks lend to stagnant companies even as debt pile mounts. Story goes on and on and on here about the debt, $360 billion of bad loans piling up and the companies that are doing lousy to keep borrowing more money, including Benetton. One story after another. Here is a story in today's Wall Street Journal. I would suggest everyone read in detail because we don't have time in Trends in the News. It says what I've been saying and others like Dr. Paul Craig Roberts and David Stockman and a few of us, and you know who's, the, um, what a ripoff the whole thing is. Stimulus efforts get weirder. Yeah. Wall Street Journal. As central banks run out of bonds to buy, they flood corporations with cheap money. The European Central Bank's corporate bond buying program has stirred so much action in credit markets that some investment banks and companies are creating new bet debt, especially for the central bank to buy. In two instances, the ECB bought bonds directly from European companies through so-called private placements in which debt is sold 
to a tight circle of buyers without the formality of a wider auction, it is a startling example of how banks and companies are quickly adapting to the extremes of monetary policy in what is an already unconventional age. And it goes on. Unconventional age. So I get, you know, when I, I do interviews, and they'll say, oh, there goes Salenti again, saying this thing was going to crash. He's been saying it's going to crash for years. You're right. I have been saying it. Hey, could you understand the word weirder? How about rigged? How about destroying capitalism? Could you figure that one out, you folks out there? This has never been done before. They're robbing our money in front of us, and they're shafting us with their neo-feudal policies. Here, the words are here. In two instances, the ECB has bought bonds directly from European companies through so-called private placements. Inside deals. You get it? It's one inside deal in a country near you. Run by the political mafias that people like to call themselves Republicans or Democrats or Labor Party or conservative. Call yourself grown up and stop believing in this crap. I'm a party member. You're a member to nothing unless you're on the top. You're a serf that they're using to make themselves legitimate. Hey, Sarkozy's going to throw his hat in the 2017 French presidential race. A murderer throwing his hat back in. Yeah, read the emails going back to Clinton and the Sarkozy people about Libya's gold and oil deals. But they don't talk about that. No, no, no. Here's what they talk about. The front page story of this little child, this Syrian kid, was bombed out of his house. An injured child, symbol of Syrian suffering. And here's the way they write it. The boy identified was pulled from a damaged building after a Syrian government or Russian airstrike in the northern city of Aleppo. They blame it on the Syrians and the Russians as Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and all you liberal Democrats and Republican conservatives caused this murder. Over almost 400,000 innocent civilians dead. They don't know who bombed this. Hey. How about all them hospitals being bombed? Yeah, only four of them by our coalition friends in Yemen. They don't put in papers like, they don't put in pictures like this. No, because the Saudis did it, and Americans only supplied them with the arms. The propaganda is disgusting. The prostitutes are whores. Media whores who get paid to put out. Yeah. Paralyzed Afghan family ripped apart, bears pain of perpetual war. How about writing who started the perpetual war, you toilet paper writers? Yeah, read our trends journals. Read where I wrote George, I broke down George Bush's evening of 9-11 speech and the speech to the nation nine days later. Not one fact on where we invaded Afghanistan. Why do we hate the Taliban? Ah, they're held in uh, Osama bin Laden. He's been there and we got to go get him. So you destroy an entire country for that? And you read, they were willing to do anything they could. We have no time to talk, Bush said. And all the people waved those American flags and tied yellow ribbons around everything that didn't move. Yeah, Doctors Without Borders withdraw staff in Yemen. Can't take it anymore. And America's heating up the war in Syria, and that's what that propaganda is about. Because read the news over the weekend. Syrian airstrikes draw U.S. warning. Wow. Hey, those Syrians must be bombing somewhere near uh, New York. 
Well, no. The Pentagon warned the Syrian government Friday not to strike U.S. and coalition personnel in Syria. What are we doing in Syria? We have no right being there. Did Congress declare war? Oh, I'm only an American. I believe in the Constitution. What Constitution? What Bill of Rights? It's a neo-feudal society run by pre-feudal minds. Syrian government bombers have been striking Kurdish positions near the city of Hasaka, where the U.S. has been backing Kurdish forces. They're bombing people in their country. The United States is there, and they're making big news about this. And we have this Pentagon issued a blunt warning to the Syrian government after its war plane struck a Kurdish-controlled region where American military personnel were on the ground. Quote, the Syrian regime would be well advised not to interfere with coalition forces or our partners, said Captain Jeff Davis, the Pentagon spokesman. Our partners. The gall of this. America invading a foreign country and warning that country that if they don't stop the revolutionaries who are trying to overthrow it, they'll pay the price. And there's no outrage. And there are no calls for peace. Why occupy peace when you can occupy the propaganda as they do in the media by using a little child to ramp up the Syrian war? You watch. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trends in the news.